Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Hi there, this is lesson 16. Graphing quadratic equations from the vertex form. Y equals AX minus H squared times plus K. So x minus h quantity squared plus a constant is the vertex form, not ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so opening exercise says, graph the equation y equals x squared, y equals the quantity x minus 2 squared, and y equals the quantity x plus 2 squared on the intervals from negative 3 to 3. So this is our domain. So we're going to substitute values in for x that equal negative 3, that go all the way up to positive 3, and everything in between. So, in order to do that, I'm going to go to a website that is called GeoGebra. So you might want to take note of this. This is a really good graphing website. It's called GeoGebra.org Graphing. Okay, so input x squared. So if I, no, I don't want to do that yet. Let's do some points first. Let's do it manually. So if I'm going to graph x squared, and we want to go from negative 3 to positive 3. So I'm going to start at negative 3. Well, what is negative 3 squared? Negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. So that would put a dot right there. That is the point negative 3, 9. What is negative 2 squared? Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. And 3 squared is 9. So as you can see, if we drew a line or a connected these points with a smooth curve, it would create what's called a parabola. All right, so there we can see what it's going to look like. Now I'm going to um, do it another time. And now we are going to go to the next equation. And it was the quantity x minus 2 squared. So I'm going to take my x, subtract 2, and then take that difference and square it, okay? So I go back to my graph, and now I'm going to graph the point. Well, what is negative 3? And what are we doing? We're subtracting 2, right? Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Squared is 25. So that would be way up here. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Squared is 16. And negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 squared is 9. So finally, I'm on the graph. So negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. So there's my first point to my next graph. 0 minus 2 squared is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, so it would go here. 2 minus 2 is 0. 0 squared is 0. And then 3 minus 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So now I have this graph coming down here. Okay, so what did that do? The minus 2 so we went from an x squared function to an x minus 2 squared function. And what did the points do? d was from my x squared function. j is from my x minus 2 squared function. And it shifted the value to the right. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and just show you. If I plug in the function x squared, okay, there was my x squared function. Notice it went through all of my points, a through g. So now if I come in here and I hit another function and I call that um, x minus 2 quantity squared, okay, x minus 2 squared, I need a parentheses there first. Okay, x minus 2 quantity squared, 
and then I move this out of the way, now you see that my points are all on this parabola. Okay, so now I need to go back and go to my third function, and it's the quantity x plus 2 squared. So now when I go back to my graph, I'm going to do it manually with points first. So I'm going to choose points. All right, so now I'm going to start at negative 3. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. So I go over to negative 3, and my point is going to be here. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 0 squared is 0. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. And if I keep going over to 3, I'm off the graph again. So now if I go back here and I enter another function, and I choose the function x plus 2, and I square it, I now have this function that's in the green line. And so what happened when we did x plus 2 from the original x squared? The x plus 2 in the parentheses moved the function two places to the left. Every point is 2 to the left. Every point is 2 to the left. So there's a point here, and then every point. Of course, we only went to negative 3. So now you see what's happening with these functions. This is called a parent function. And then these functions are transformations of the parent. The minus sign moves the graph to the right, and the plus sign moves the graph left. Okay, so now in exercise one it says, without graphing, state the vertex for each of the following quadratic equations. So if I go back to my graph here, the vertex of the parent function was zero. So if I go back here, what that means is, if I did y equals zero squared, I got zero. Okay, my vertex is something's going on with these values. So this is just a parent function. And if we are going to start talking about what does A do, what does H do, and what does K do. So now if I have Y equals X plus 2 squared, well, my H is here. My A is 1, and my K was 0. Okay, so when I did this, where is the vertex for x plus 2 squared? So if I go back, if I plug in 0 here, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. That does not give me the vertex. The vertex was 0. What do I have to plug in here to make it 0? And the answer is x equals negative 2. So the vertex was the point negative 2, comma, 0. So if the vertex was negative 2, comma, 0, then I'm doing x plus 2 squared. See what happens? It's the opposite sign of the, the number of the h, because that's a minus h. It's the opposite sign of the h, and then the k is your y value. So let's just see if that's what's happening. So if I wanted to know what the vertex is, what's the opposite of negative 5? In other words, what's if h is 5, then my x value will be the opposite, or it is 5, h is 5, okay, because it's x minus h, so h is 5 here, so that is my x value of my graph, and then the 3 is my y, so let's see if that comes to be true, so now I'm going to go back to GeoGebra and put in y equals x minus 5 squared plus 3. Okay, so to save time, I just went into GeoGebra and graphed y equals x minus 5 squared plus 3. And here's the graph, y equals x minus 5 squared plus 3. So what value is this? This is the point 5 comma 3. So if I put a point there, okay, that is the point 5 comma 3. So as you can see, 
the vertex form of the equation, this is my x value and this is my y value of the y intercept or the vertex. Okay, that's either the minimum or the maximum of the parabola. So without graphing, we just determined that the vertex is that the point five comma three. So the op you do the opposite if it's in parentheses, and you do the same if it is not. That's the easiest way to explain that. Okay, B says y equals x squared minus 2.5. Well, this isn't really in vertex form. You if So if you want to make it easier to understand what's going on here, put it in vertex form. The number in front of the x squared is 1, so there's nothing outside the parentheses. So if I put x inside parentheses, and this is squared, well, what are we adding to x here? We're adding nothing to it, so let's just say x plus 0 and put the 2 out here. Because x plus 0 is x, and so, and then if I do minus 2.5 outside here, okay, my h is 0, and my k is negative 2.5. Okay? Okay, so I'm just verifying this with a graph. So if I graph y equals x squared minus 2.5, change it to this form here so we can see more clearly what the vertex is, 0 comma negative 2.5. And then if I graph it in GeoGebra and see if this equation will give us this minimum here, then we did it correctly. So I go to GeoGebra and I have the graph x squared minus 2.5. And if I want the point, I think I can change that. No, maybe not. All right, so anyhow, if I just put a point there, I'm trying to get it as close to negative 2.5 as possible. That's pretty close right there. So it is 0, negative 2.5, and, and I'm at the vertex of the parabola. 0, negative 2.5. Okay. C is y equals the quantity x plus 4 squared. So I'm going to rewrite this. y equals the quantity x plus 4 squared. Okay, remember the original is a times x minus h squared plus k. All right. Um, I don't have a k in this situation, so I'm going to put a k. There's nothing there, so k is 0. And then I answer the question, what is the vertex? The opposite when it's in parentheses, and the same when it's outside. So this vertex is the point negative 4, comma, 0. OK, so now I want to graph this in GeoGebra to see if this answer is correct. So I have y equals the quantity x plus 4 squared. I go to GeoGebra, I plug that in, y equals, or f of x equals x plus 4 quantity squared, and my vertex is the minimum right here at negative 4 comma 0 and sure enough negative 4 comma 0 okay now we're going in the opposite direction the converse of what we've been doing and it says write a quadratic equation whose graph will have the given vertex so notice what's going on here this number here is opposite in the parentheses so I'm going to write y equals parentheses, x. This is a positive number, so this will be the opposite, 1.9. Close the parentheses and square it. And notice the signs, zeros aren't very good indicator here, but here's a plus 3 and it stayed positive 3. Here was a minus 2.5 and it was a negative 2.5. So if I have a negative 4 here, it's minus 4 here. Just remember the sign of y is the sign of k. The sign of x is the opposite of the sine of h, if you will, because it's minus h. So it's minus this. So h is that number there. So if it was negative, it would be minus a negative number. That's where that comes from. OK, the next one. b is 0, 100. So if I write y, whoops, that's not a very good color. Uh, let's erase that, choose a different color y equals x minus 0 or x plus 0, either one, squared plus 100. Okay, well, x plus 0, and then I'm going to fix this. I don't want to have x plus 0 quantity squared. It's just going to be x squared plus 100.
Okay, part C. We have y equals x minus a negative 2 is plus 2 squared plus 3 halves. Okay. Okay, on to page 2 here. This is an exploratory challenge, and it says Caitlin has 60 feet of material that can be used to make a fence. Using this material, she wants to create a rectangular pen for her dogs to play in. What dimensions will maximize the area of the pen? Okay, so before I tackle A, I just wanted to refresh your memory on prior math concepts. And I drew a rectangle here. It's not to scale, of course, but if this was 25 width and the length was 5, that adds up to 30, plus 25 is 55, plus 5 is 60. So 60 feet. Okay, so that is our perimeter. So our perimeter equals 60. 20 plus 10 is 30, plus 20 is 50, plus 10 is 60. So here's another perimeter of 60, but my dimensions are different. So then when I find the area of both of them, the area is length times width, 25 times 5 is 125 square feet. And then when I do that, the same here with this rectangle, the length or the width got shorter by 5 feet and what got added to the length 5 feet, right? Subtract 5 from 25 and get 20, add 5 to 5 and get 10. So you're taking away from the width and adding to the length. And then we're getting closer and closer to a perfect square. And when we do that, we're getting a larger area. So the area here is 200 square feet. So as this number gets closer to this number, this number gets larger. So in other words, the maximum area of a pen would be a square. Okay, so that's what we need to think about when we're doing these problems. Okay, so A says, let W be the width of the rectangular pen in feet. Write an expression that represents the length when the width is W feet. So an expression is not an equation. So I don't want to write L equals blah, blah, blah. That's an equation. They just want the expression or the other side of the equal sign. L equals what? And the expression is on the other side of the equal sign. So we have W. First of all, we have 60 feet of fence. And if we subtract two of those widths, that it will leave us... Okay, so what we're doing here is if we have a rectangular, well, let me make that neater by using my magic pen. So if we have this, all right, and this is my W, and this is a W, and this is an L, and this is an L, all right, if I have 60 feet, but I'm taking away the two widths, okay, the total minus two of the widths, that is leaving me with two L's. Well, I want to know what the length is, 1L. So how do I get 2 down to 1? I divide it by 2. So the expression that represents length is the total minus the two widths and then divided by 2 because there are two lengths. So hopefully that makes sense to you. There's our expression. B says to define a function that describes the area A in terms of the width. So it's a function. A in terms of W. That's what that means. A of W, we would say. All right. And now remember what our equation is. Y equals AX. Oops. Not AX squared plus BX plus C. That's standard form. We are doing vertex form. Y equals A times X minus some H squared plus Okay, so before I continue here, I'm going to simplify this up here because remember this, now I'm just going to write L equals now. It said expression, but this is the equation. This is what L represents, our length. And I can simplify that. 60 divided by 2 is 30 and minus 2W divided by 2 is W. So this is our L. So area of a square is length or a rectangle is length times width. So area of the and so rewriting the definition as in terms of w the area we want to know what the area is area is length times width in terms of w 
So width times length, but length in terms of w is 30 minus w. So this is width times length in terms of w, if that makes sense, hopefully. And then once we do that, we can distribute. Oops, that's 30. So it's 30 minus w here. So w times 30 is 30w. And w times a negative w is negative w squared. So I'm just going to put this in standard form, w squared plus 30w. Negative w squared plus 30w. So that is my area in terms of w. Now it says rewrite a of w into vertex form. So I'm going to write a of w equals negative w squared plus 30w. Okay, so I want to put parentheses around this. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And then, well, what does what what can I do from there? Okay, so now we want to complete the square. So we're going to put a negative here, w squared plus 30 w here leave a space, and put an equal sign here. All right. Actually, I don't want an equal sign uh, because I already have it. I'm not making the equation. I want everything all on one side. So remember how to complete the square. You take half of the b. Remember, it's b divided by 2 squared equals your c. So 30 divided by 2 equals 15. And we're going to square that which equals 225. So I'm going to add 225 here. But now it's 225 greater than this value, or less than, actually, because there's a negative out here. Negative times a positive 225 is minus 225. So in order to make this equal to this one, I also have to add 225 to it. Okay? Don't let that negative confuse you. That's a minus 225. So to make it equal to this, I have to add 225 back into it because this would equal 0, and that's what we had here. Okay, so now we're going to complete the square, and it's going to be w, and our number is now 15. So it's w minus 15 squared. plus 225. Okay, made a mistake here. I have a plus here. That should be a minus. Let me just change colors here. It's, it's 30 minus W. My apologies there. That's minus. That's minus. So that's why So we take half of the B term and square it. It's always going to be positive here. So negative 15. So it would be negative 30, half is negative 15, but negative 15 squared is a positive 225. Okay, so there it is. So our answer is negative quantity W minus 15 squared plus 225. So now we see that our vertex would be 15 comma 225. Okay, now it says, what are the coordinates of the vertex? Interpret the vertex in terms of the problem. Okay, so what are the coordinates of the vertex? It's the opposite inside the parentheses. It's the same outside. So there's the vertex. Interpret the vertex in terms of the problem. Okay, well... I'm just going to say it. Um, the vertex in terms of the problem is when we have a side length of 15, then we get the maximum area of 225 square feet. All right, so here's a more per precise uh, explanation. The vertex is located at 15, 225. Since the leading coefficient is negative, the function has a maximum, right? The parabola is opening downward. 
The maximum value of the function is 225, which occurs when w, the width, is 15. For this problem, this means that the maximum area is 225 square feet, which happens when the width is 15 feet. All righty. He says, what dimensions maximize the area of the pen? Do you think this is a surprising answer? Okay, the pen has the greatest area when the length and width are both 15 feet. Okay, students may or may not be surprised to note that this occurs when a, the rectangle is a 15 by 15 square. So prior classes, you should have realized that a square is the maximum area for a rectangle when the sides are equal. Okay, page three brings us to the end. That is the end of lesson 16. Review the lesson summary and go to your problem set.